I saw a cool new cartoon on TV yesterday. I wonder how they make the pictures move like that. The first animated movies were made by drawing thousands and thousands of pictures. Each picture changed slightly so that when the pictures were played one after the other, they appeared to move. What do you mean by appear to move? I have a book which works a bit like a cartoon. Ah, here it is. Now, if you flip through the pages, the images seem to be moving. The movement happens because each point on the object is slowly transformed or moved to a new position. The image changes position, changes in size, and rotates gradually from one picture to the next. In mathematics, we call these changes transformations. The word transformation means a change or a movement. If we place an object on the Cartesian plane and then transform it, we can measure how much it has been transformed by studying the change in the coordinates of the points of the object. We are interested in tracking the effect that a change or transformation of object has on the coordinates of each point in the object. In this lesson, we will look at one type of transformation, which we call a rotation. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to predict and describe how the coordinates of a point have changed after the point has been rotated through an angle of 90 degrees or through an angle of 180 degrees. In grade 10, you studied two kinds of transformations. The first was a translation. A translation changes the position of a point, a line, or a shape. It is simply a change in the position of an object, and it does not affect the shape or the size of the object. When you translate an object, you don't turn or flip it. Here's a point K with coordinates 2, minus 1. Can you translate it 4 units horizontally and 2 units vertically? OK, so I take the point 4 units to the right and then 2 up to this point. I'm going to place my dot here. The x value at this new point is 6 and the y value is 1. Right, so you've translated the point K to produce a new point. We call this new point the image of K. To show that it is a transformation of the original point, we write the image of K as K prime. The second kind of transformation that you should recognize from grade 10 is a reflection. We can reflect or flip an object over a mirror line that we call an axis of symmetry. Have a look at this example of a reflection. Here is a triangle HIJ. It has been reflected about the x-axis to produce an image called triangle H prime, I prime, J prime. Do you see that the point H and the point H prime are the same distance away from the mirror line? This is also true for the distances of the points I and I prime, as well as J and J prime. In fact, in a reflection, the distance of a point and its image from the mirror line is always the same. When we reflect a triangle, its area or size and its shape stay the same. So now let's work with a new transformation called a rotation. Let's start with the line and place a point in the middle of the line. That point is not allowed to move. We call this the center of rotation for the line. Now let's start to turn the line around that fixed point. If we create a new line for each rotation made, I will get something like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. It has a center that stays in the same place and spokes that turn around the center. We say that the spokes rotate around the center. If we carry that idea into the Cartesian plane, we can transform a point in a similar way. Let's take this point M with coordinates 3 minus 4 and rotate this point 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. We are going to use the origin as the center and make the point rotate around it. We want to know where the point will move to. At this point, it will help to think of the bicycle wheel. We are going to draw the point we have chosen to the center of rotation, the origin. So point M is joined to the origin by a kind of spoke. So 90 degrees will be about here. Can I use a protractor to measure the 90 degrees? 
Good idea. Here's my protractor. Remember to position the protractor carefully with the center point over the origin. Okay, and I must line up the zero degree line along the spoke. So a rotation of 90 degrees would move the spoke to about there. Now draw a line from the origin to the place you have marked. That's it. That shows you the angle of rotation between the point M and its image. But we haven't finished yet. Where is the image of M exactly? We don't have exact coordinates for this point yet. I think this length from the origin to M must be the same as the length from the origin to M's image. Correct. Now we can find the coordinates in two ways. We can measure the distance from the origin to M and mark it off on the new spoke like this. Or we can use a compass to draw a circle. Like this. The circle must have a radius the length of OM. The place where the circle cuts the new spoke is the new point M'. prime. So the coordinates of M' prime are 4 and 3. Well done, Gerard. Now let's see if you can rotate the new point 90 degrees anti-clockwise again. I reckon I can do that. I take the protractor and mark off another 90 degrees. I measure the distance on this spoke that must be the same on the new spoke. So I get this point here. Its coordinates are minus 3 and 4. That's it. The new point you found is the image of M prime. So, we call it M double prime. Now look at the three points we have here. M, M prime and M double prime. If we make one more rotation of 90 degrees, can you predict where it will be on the Cartesian plane? Do you know what its coordinates will be? I think it will be in this part of the plane. And I think the coordinates will be minus 4 and minus 3. Spot on. Now, can you explain what pattern helped you get this answer? Well, if you look at the other three points, you can see that they all have a 3 and a 4 in the coordinates. The point we want is in the third quadrant, so its x value and its y value are both negative. So the answer must have a negative 3 and a negative 4 in it. So how did you work out which coordinate gets 3 and which one gets 4? Actually, I guessed a bit. Well, your guess worked. But let me show you a useful way to work this out. Instead of just making a spoke from the point to the center of rotation, we can make a right angle triangle. The first point, 3 minus 4, has a distance of 4 down the y-axis and 3 across the x-axis. So we could place a triangle on the Cartesian plane with sides of 3 and 4 like this. If we pin down the triangle at the center of rotation and rotate it through 90 degrees, can you see how much it will need to rotate? Hey, that makes it easy. The one side of the triangle starts on the x-axis here. So when it reaches the y-axis here, it will have gone through 90 degrees. So let me do that. It fits what we found already. M prime is 4, 3. Now if I rotate it to find M double prime, the side of the triangle must move from the y-axis until it reaches the x-axis here. And again, it fits what we found already. M double prime is minus 3, 4. So for the last point, we move the triangle around to get the same side onto this part of the y-axis. And now we can see the point we want is minus 4, minus 3. And this makes sense because the longer side of the triangle lies on the x-axis. That is the side of length 4 and the shorter side here is parallel to the y-axis. So the right angle triangle is a useful tool for working out 90 degree rotations on the Cartesian plane. Now let's see if we can identify a pattern in the coordinates of the points without referring to the Cartesian plane. In other words, can we find a rule to help us predict the coordinates of the new image points without using the plane or any constructions on it? To help us, let's make a table of all the points that we've rotated and look at their coordinates. Let's put them down in the order that we rotate them. First we had point M with coordinates 3 minus 4. We rotated it 90 degrees anti-clockwise to get M with coordinates 4, 3. 
That point was rotated 90 degrees to find point M double prime with coordinates minus 3, 4. The final rotation took us to point M triple prime which has coordinates minus 4, minus 3. Moving from M to M prime, the X changed from 3 to 4. Moving from there to M double prime, the X became negative 3. Following that pattern, it makes sense that the next X value will be negative 4. And then Y followed the same pattern. If the X has a 3, then the Y must have the 4. Now can you describe this pattern in a more general way? In other words, can you explain what happens to the X and the Y each time? It looks like the X and the Y values are swapping, but the signs are changing each time, but I'm not sure how. That's an excellent start. From M to M prime, the X and Y values swapped and the new X value changed sign. For the next rotation, the X and Y coordinates swapped again with a sign change of the new X value. Using the same pattern, our next number should swap X and Y again and change the sign of the new X value. Let's see if that works. Okay, so the coordinates of the next point should be first swap the X and the Y values, then change the sign of the new X value. So that's minus 4 minus 3, and it's right. So our pattern seems to be working. Now let's do that in terms of X and Y without looking at any numbers. Say we have a point A. X, Y. What would the coordinates be if we rotated it 90 degrees around the origin? Okay, this looks tricky, but I think I can do it. First swap the X and the Y around, and then change the sign of the new X coordinate. Well done. We have found an algebraic way of predicting the effect of a 90 degree rotation of a point around the origin. Now, using only the table of values, can you predict where we will land up if I rotate the last point by another 90 degrees? That should be easy. The last point we worked out was minus 4, minus 3. So if I write down minus yx, I should have the answer. So the new x will be minus minus 3. That's positive 3. And the new y value will be minus 4. So the new point is 3 minus 4. Now, where will this point be on the Cartesian plane? 3 minus 4. That's back where we started over here. Oh, I guess that makes sense. We've rotated a full 360 degrees, so we're back at the beginning point. Right. So far, our rotations have been anticlockwise, because in maths, going anticlockwise, we move from zero to bigger positive angles until we end up at 360 degrees. So, we move in a positive direction. But we would find the same thing happening if we had chosen to move in a negative or clockwise direction. Now, I'll leave this for you to test in your own time. Let's move on. And look at rotating a point through 180 degrees. We will move anticlockwise again. But direction doesn't matter with 180 degrees. Whichever way we go around the plane, we'll still end up halfway from where we started. That's true. Let's look at the point we've used for rotating 90 degrees. The point will rotate from here to here for 180 degrees and another 180 degrees would take it back to the original position. So a rotation of 180 degrees puts the next point onto a straight line that joins the point and its image and it goes through the center of rotation. Let's see if we can identify a pattern in a table of values for 180 degree rotations. We can use the same table as the 90 degree, but we can delete the information we do not need. If M is 3 minus 4, then a rotation of 180 degrees will take it to this point minus 3, 4. That's M prime now. And another rotation of 180 degrees will take it back to where we started at 3 minus 4. That would be M double prime now. Can you describe the effect of rotating the point through 180 degrees? It seems that it just changes the signs of the coordinates without swapping the numbers around. Correct. So we could say that for any point B with coordinates x, y, the image B prime would have coordinates minus x minus y. Now we need to use these ideas. Here's a point P with coordinates minus 2, 5. Can you rotate the point 90 degrees clockwise and find the coordinates of image P prime? See if you can use three different methods to find the answer. Okay, 
Let me start by using a protractor. I plot B, then join it to the origin. Then I measure 90 degrees and draw a line from the origin through my 90 degree mark. Then I measure off the same distance on this line as from O to P. This will be my new point P prime. It has coordinates 5, 2. Great. Now can you confirm your answer using a second method? Yes, but I don't think I need a cardboard triangle. I'll draw a line down to the x-axis here and make a triangle. Then, if I rotate the triangle through 90 degrees, the short side will land up here on the y-axis. The point will be here at 5, 2. Wonderful. Now, without looking at your constructions, can you check your answer algebraically? OK. I can just write down the coordinates of P. Then I'll swap the x and y coordinates and then change the sign of the new x value. That gives us 5, 2, 4 P prime. You need to practice a few of these yourselves. Once you get going, you'll find them quite easy. Then you can also practice rotating a point through 180 degrees. You can sketch a Cartesian plane to help you, or you can do this algebraically. Now let's look at what we have learned in this lesson. We looked at a new kind of transformation called a rotation. For any rotation, we need to know what the center of rotation is, what direction to move in, and through how many degrees to rotate. First, we rotated a point around the origin. We went anti-clockwise because this gives us positive angles to work with, but all our methods also work if you move clockwise. We used the protractor and ruler to find the image of the point. We also used a cardboard triangle as a tool for rotating a point. Then we used a table to keep track of the coordinates of the images. From the table, we discovered that there is a pattern that the images of a point follow. If point XY is rotated 90 degrees around the origin, the coordinates of the image are negative Y, X. If a point XY is rotated 180 degrees around the origin, the coordinates of the image are negative X, negative Y. Here's an example for you to practice rotations. Remember, you will need to find other examples as well. Point G has coordinates minus 5, 7. Find the image of G when it is rotated anti-clockwise around the origin. A. By 90 degrees. B. By 180 degrees. And by C. 360 degrees. Use three methods to confirm your answers. In the next lesson, we will be studying one more type of transformation which we call enlargement. We will enlarge a polygon in the Cartesian plane. Good luck with your task.